So I got an A in A-level maths and I was absolutely more than happy with that. However, there was one pesky module called decision maths. We were not friends. So I will let you into a bit of a secret. I got a C in D1. And if you came to this video looking for decision maths tips, I ain't got any. Zero. None. But I do have other A-level maths tips and I'm hoping you stick around for those. Welcome back everyone, or if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Raina and I did maths, chemistry and biology A-level back in 2017. And I'm now in my fourth year of dentistry at the University of Sheffield. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna subscribe, that would be amazing as well. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by saying that maths isn't really like other subjects. It wasn't like chemistry and biology. It's a bit of a weird one, right? It's quite unique because every question is basically an application question and you have to understand understand the fundamental concepts in order to apply them to everything else. So in the case of maths, I would say that the specification doesn't really help because there aren't model answers or mark scheme answers that you can really learn to get the marks. So therefore, my first tip for A-level maths would be to do as many questions as possible. Do textbook questions, homework questions from class, online questions, past paper questions, basically as many questions as you can find. I have to say, I by far did the most amount of questions in my maths A-level compared to my other subjects. This is absolutely key to maths because you need the high level of repetition in order order to actually understand the concepts and be able to apply them to different questions using different numbers. In my other subjects, biology and chemistry, quite a lot of the time you could look at a mark scheme, learn the mark scheme answer and get quite a lot of the marks doing it this way rather than understanding every single point about the concept. However, with maths, you just can't do that. You really have to know what the question is asking you and the only way you'll be able to do that is by doing as many questions as possible. And if you've watched any of my other A-level videos, you guys will already know I absolutely love past papers and they are key to doing well in A-levels, especially maths, where such a high level of repetition is necessary. And there are so many past papers available for maths from the old spec and the new spec, so do all of them. I actually did have a spreadsheet to keep track of all the past papers and I would just take them off when I'd done them and tick them off if I've repeated them as well. And also if you're practicing a certain type of module, don't forget about other modules. So if you're doing C2 practice, make sure you're also doing some C1 practice. So in order to be able to do as many questions as possible, you need access to lots of different resources and places that you can actually find questions as well. I used a range of websites, um, the CGP textbooks and YouTube videos as well. I will leave a list of all the helpful resources that I can find in the description box down below so do check that out as well. Personally, I feel like textbooks are really good to be able to go over a concept quickly and also do the end of section questions. YouTube channels are really good to be able to watch someone work out a question and follow it along. I remember the exam solutions website was a particularly useful one to watch someone work out calculations. And as for the calculators that are used in maths, I swear these days, calculators just keep on advancing and I can't keep up with which one you should get and etc. The scientific ones, graphical ones, but I think I just had the basic Casio one. I will grab it. Okay, so this is the calculator that I had and it worked absolutely fine. I don't think this was anything too high tech. Um, so I don't really have any specific recommendations for calculators, just try and find the one that works best for your needs. If you do further maths, I think it will probably be better if you get a graphical one um, that's a bit more advanced. I don't think you need to go that fancy with a calculator. I know there are some really helpful ones that potentially can help you more. However, just using one of these, you can learn shortcuts and ways to check if you've got your calculations right. If I find any videos on YouTube, I will link them down below. Okay, so my next tip is to ask for help early. I know it's hard, but you kind of have to be that person that's willing to put their hand up in class and be like, sir, I just don't understand this. Please can you just go over it again? I promise you're not gonna look stupid. No one is gonna judge you. And most likely people are probably thinking the same, but they might be too scared to ask. You might keep getting a certain type of question wrong because there's just something fundamental that you might have missed at the start. And if you deal with something early and you've got help early on, that means you don't have the stress of trying to deal with it when it comes to your exams and having to relearn a concept all over again. If you're a little bit worried about asking in class, 
Just hang around a few minutes after lesson and I'm sure the teacher will be more than happy to help you one-on-one. -on -one. So my next tip is to always show you're working out. This is actually a trap that I started falling into. So as my maths improved and I got better, I started subconsciously doing some of the steps in my head and not showing my working out. There's a few reasons why you shouldn't do this and why you should always show your working out. So firstly, you can get marks from working out even if your final solution isn't correct. And often the final solution is only worth one mark and the working out can be four marks or five marks, which is a huge chunk of the overall marks. So even if you didn't get to the final worked solution, if you've showed your working out, you can get a huge portion of the overall marks. And also it's a lot easier to retrace your steps if you've got them already written down and you can see where you've actually gone wrong. Just try and get into a good habit of writing every step down even if you think it's a really easy step because sometimes the mark schemes surprise me with what you actually get a mark for. So my next tip is more a piece of advice and it's to appreciate that maths is probably gonna take more effort than your other subjects and generally it's gonna take some time just to click and fall into place. There really is no shortcut to being good at maths and doing well at A level. The secret is a lot of questions, a lot of repetition and time and hard work. Maths is so unique because it's such a methodical subject. You start with step one, then step two, step three, all the way up until you've got your final solution. And if somewhere along the line you haven't quite understood what's going on, it's quite easy to go wrong. So the big secret, which isn't really a secret at all, and it's just hard work over the two years, a lot of repetition and questions, and past papers, do all of them, any that you can find. This will kind of lead to an ingrained thought process where you look at a question and you can immediately think, okay, that's step one, and follow it all the way through till you get to the final solution. I don't know if anyone else thought this, but I found maths to be quite an abstract subject. So I would sit in lessons and have like mini existential crises and be like, what even are numbers? Like, what am I doing? And I just want to say you will get there with maths. It will take some time, repetition, questions, but I promise there will be a time that it will click for you. If you have any other questions about A-level maths, please leave a comment down below and I will see you all again in the next video. Bye!